we're back in the garage. So we got this thing. We've got no heat call. I guess a bunch of people have been here and been replacing pressure switches like crazy. So it uh, looks like it's calling for heat right now. You gotta love that, huh? Um, let's see. So that's a Bryant. So let's count the flashes. We got one, two, three, one, two. All right. So we got three fast and two slows. So let's open this up and see what's going on. So here we go. All right, so it's a 32. It means the low pressure switch did not close or open. Uh, it looks like somebody has bypassed that stuff. Uh, I do have an OEM one. Uh, so we're gonna pop that in there and see what's going on. Uh, and then we'll go from there, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, so here's, here's the thing on here. It's in there, so that's gonna totally deteriorate over time. So that should be fun. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and kill power and uh, get this new one installed and see what's up. We're looking at this pressure switch. Uh, I think it's wired wrong. I'm gonna replace it anyway, but um, if we look here, where to go, where to go? Do, 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 do. Okay, so if we look here, we have our high pressure switch. So that's brown, two browns and a gray, right? So that, that's supposed to be our high, but if we look, it's 0.30, right? So that's actually our low pressure. And then this one's gonna be our high, which is 0.78. So these wires should be here and those wires should be there. So that's probably what's been causing our issue. Um, so I'm gonna replace it anyway, just to cover it. Cause I guess they said that they tested the motor or they tested the switch and it wasn't closing. So um, I do have an OEM one, which I'd rather do. I just found out this thing was installed this year. So I don't know why I'm here. Uh, the installing company should be here cause we didn't put this in. Um, and that, that right there is ridiculous. Run new wires, dude, seriously. And actually, they have extra wires. Look at that. I didn't need this. This is for an Ecobee. So pretty much if you don't have a common, this is like a switching relay. But, you know, it's like, okay, so this one didn't have it, but this one does. Run new wires, man. But anyway, okay, so, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get this changed out, and then we will wire it properly and then test it and go from there. So here we go. We got her in there. We're going to go ahead and cycle heat. So we're going to just do this from the uh, zone board. And, of course doesn't have the second stage heat hooked up which I'll have to jump manually but I don't know if that if you can hear that you hear that noise that sounds like the uh, heat exchanger is full of water yeah this thing's totally full of water I bet you I'm gonna get a pressure switch error right now yep look at that Three, one, two. Yeah, no pressure switch didn't close. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's basically air trying to pull. And then if you can hear this, it's struggling. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's see if there's water in here. Yeah, there's definitely water in there. Yeah, I can you see the bubbles. So yeah, so I think something's not trapped right. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this and vacuum out the water and then try again. So I got my vacuum hooked up to the drain line. I'm gonna suck out all the water out of the unit and then we'll put it back together and then try it again and see what happens. Uh, I'm, we, I mean, it does have its own trap, but we may need to double trap this thing. Um, I know that with the Lennox, they actually don't have a condensate trap. So you have to put a, at least a three inch trap on it. Otherwise it has the same problem. So this might be similar to this, so. I'm gonna vacuum out the water and then we'll go from there and see what's up. Oh man, looks like the pipe is full of water. Awesome. Yeah, the pipe is full of water. Alright, so I'm back, uh, vacuuming out the unit too, just to get any excess water out of it. Looks like I got all this water out. There's no candy cane on the end, it's just a 90, so I think stuff is getting into the drain line. Or, I'm sorry, into the flue pipe. So I think the maximum amount of 9s we can use is 4, so there's 1, and then it goes up. There's 2. And there's 3, and then we have a 45. And then it comes across. That's four. And then there 
it is right there. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's a piece of ice hanging, an icicle hanging off the end of it. Should be a complete 90, you know, coming down so stuff doesn't fly into it. But it, yeah, look at that. The water's dripping out of it, so that's not good. All right, we got it back together. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try this again. Here we go. Well, I don't hear the bubbly noise no more. Yeah, so this whole pipe was full of water. So I, I'm guessing that that long part that goes across the garage, it's probably not, uh, it's probably not, uh, what do you call it, uh, leveled properly. So it just gets full of water and messes with the pressure. Yeah, see, now we're good. We got our uh, igniter going. There we go. Yeah, so our uh, permanent fix is gonna have to basically rerun this and go from there. So I, I suspect water was getting inside these things and that's what kept causing the pressure switches to fail. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and talk to our customer and uh, see what they wanna do about that because this is gonna get full of water again. And we'll be back to square one. Yeah, so I, I'm checking the pitch. So there's a furnace right comes up here. So it's already pitched downward. And it looks like it's pitching down further. So we're gonna check this. So I think what's happening is it's going down and then up. So this whole section gets full of water. I just checked my vacuum cleaner and I, it's half full. That thing holds six, six gallons total, it's half full. That means I pulled out about three gallons of water. So this whole pipe must have been full of water. terrible so that's where we're checking our our uh our level so it's going down downward towards this down 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 and then all this backs up because there's that hard 90 there so this all fills with water from from the 90 all the way to about there it causes issues with the pressure switch so what we would need to do is, the way it's supposed to be done is it should be pitched downward. That way any water in there will run back into the furnace and then go through the drainage system. Um, now, because they went through this big beam here, that's gonna be very difficult. So what I'm thinking we can do is at this 90, if we can install a drain here and then you know just put like a little concrete trap and then run it straight out. That way any water that's in there will just drain right out. Uh, instead of having to run a whole new pipe. But this was just installed, I think, in June of this year. So I would I would say that the installation company should come out and take care of that at no charge because that's just bad install. All right, so we're back the next day. Completely redid this. You can see I had to basically make the hole deeper. Uh, got rid of those uh, 45s, and now everything is a downhill pitch, so the water will actually run back down to the furnace and through the drain. And I completed the candy cane piping. So anyway, hopefully this helps you out if you get a 90% furnace. I forgot to mention that, it's a 90% furnace or a condensating furnace. Um, so anyway, hopefully this helps you out. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.